In this video, I'll be working on restoring an old cocktail cabinet as a commission for a client that lives locally to me. This unit has apparently been stored in a garage for over 30 years and the client decided recently that they wanted to use it in their home but it needed a bit of work doing to it first. So I went to collect it in my van and once I got it into the workshop I could have a closer look at it to figure out what work I'd need to do. Starting with the most obvious thing, the finish was in a bad state with lots of scratches, scrapes and scuff marks. Some of the scratches appeared to be quite deep and it was hard to tell at this point whether they would be easy to fix or not. The top door was a little bit stiff but inside it looked really nice aside from a few rusty areas and the light in this unit appears to be original and it still works. The handles were loose, the drawer was really sticking and not sliding properly. The drawer itself has dovetail joints and it's solid wood apart from the bottom and drawer front which are made of plywood. The doors at the bottom were very stiff and on the inside there were some nasty looking dark moisture stains. The bottom of the unit was actually in really good condition, no signs of woodworm or rot or anything like that. I started by removing the handles and these were made in England. And I started working on removing the old finish. Usually I use my card scraper for this and I have a video all about how to sharpen and use a card scraper, link to that in the description box below. But this finish was really tough, it just wasn't cutting through it properly, so I reached for my carbide scrapers instead, and they worked much better. Links to all of the tools I'm using here can be found in the description box below. You can see here that the carbide scrapers allow me to get right back down to the bare wood pretty easily. I do all of the scraping in the same direction as the wood grain is running to avoid leaving any scrape marks. I always prefer scraping veneered furniture like this rather than starting with sanding as it's quicker and it kicks up less dust in the air too. Plus with sanding there's a risk that you could accidentally sand through the veneer. You might be wondering why I didn't unscrew the hinges here to give me better access without having to work around them and to be honest I'm wondering that too. Once most of the finish is gone I move on to sanding by hand with some 100 grit sandpaper to get rid of any of the old finish that was left over. Once that's done I wipe on some white spirit just to help highlight any areas that I might have missed and then I can move on to doing the rest of the unit in exactly the same way. I'd talk quickly about sanding and some sanding tips. Firstly, always fold your sandpaper in threes like this. Uh, the reason being it grips to your hand really nicely and it won't rip or tear. It'll just sit nicely in your hand and it works really well. It also gives you three sanding surfaces so once you're done with that side you can move to that side and once that's done you can then fold it over and use that. And you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you but I've actually sanded this whole unit with just this much sandpaper and that's a testament to using good quality sandpaper. You get much more mileage out of decent quality sandpaper and it's less likely to rip or tear and it's far less frustrating to work with so it's always worth spending money on. This isn't sponsored or anything like that but the brand that I usually use is Kling Spore. It's reasonably inexpensive and it just works really well. Once everything is sanded at 100 grit, I sand again at 240 grit just to smooth everything over. And then I brush away all of the dust and one last wipe down with white spirit again to check I haven't missed any bits. Here I'm making a little pad using some cotton wool and a cotton cloth and I can use that to apply a coat of shellac. I chose shellac here mainly because it dries very quickly, almost instantly in fact, which means I can carry on working without having to wait for it to cure but also it really pops the grain of the wood and just looks great. It's not the most hard wearing of finishes though and that's why later on I'm also going to apply another finish over the top. With shellac you have to be careful to maintain a wet edge at all times and not overwork it because it dries so quickly. It also brought out a lot more contrast in the wood and I imagine this is how it might have looked originally when it was first made. 
but over the years maybe the sunlight has had an effect on the wood and left it looking a bit dull. I noticed a small piece of missing veneer at the back of the unit and I decided to use a hard wax stick to repair that. Link to these in my tool section too. I can just find the most accurate colour match and melt some on there with a butter knife. And I remove the excess with a knife blade. Next I can work on the inside of the cabinet and first I want to vacuum away all of the dust and cobwebs. These dark water stains are usually quite difficult to deal with. The light water stains tend to come out much easier usually. I'm going to use some oxalic acid to try and get rid of those stains, but as this shelf is plywood, I need to be really careful as I don't want to soak it as there's a risk that the plies could delaminate. I mix up the oxalic acid with some hot water and this acid is hazardous stuff, so it's important to not get it on your skin or inhale any dust. Before applying the solution, I sanded with some 100 grit paper, which should help the acid to get through the old finish and penetrate the wood and soak into those stains. I apply the treatment to the whole shelf, trying not to leave on too much water. And I left that for maybe 15 minutes or so, and when I came back the stains were definitely less prominent, but they were still visible, so I removed any excess water, sanded again, and did a second coat of the solution. Then I waited again and sanded again and added some shellac to the shelf to see how visible the stains would be. And again, they were less prominent but still visible, but I didn't want to apply a third coat of acid as I felt I was already pushing my luck a bit by adding water to the plywood shelf. And also I knew that adding a few coats of shellac would help to hide the stains even more. So I think I applied about three coats of shellac in total, denibbing in between each coat. And at that point, the stains were pretty difficult to spot. I think it was about the best I could do without either replacing it with a new shelf, which would be a shame as it's nice to keep it original, I think. With the inside done, I went back to working on the outside again. And at this point, I mixed up some shellac with a little bit of dark oak wood stain to use on some of the areas where the veneer had been sanded away really thin, like here on the very edge. And I used an artist's paintbrush to apply it just to help it blend in with the original color. The stain was a little bit light in colour, but that's a good thing as I can recoat it a few times until it matches. I can then start denibbing that shellac coat with some 400 grit wet and dry paper. This just removes any imperfections like dust from the finish. And then I apply a top coat of water-based varnish, which is really quite durable and hard wearing. And it also adds a nice satin sheen to the wood, which will look similar to the original finish. I did three coats of varnish and denibbed in between each coat. And here's how it ended up looking. These handles had dry and rusty bolts, so I added some oil to the threads and also chucked them up in my drill and used a scouring pad to clean off the rust from the heads. There wasn't really much I could do with the handles themselves because I think they have a plated finish, so I didn't want to risk sanding or buffing them. Besides, I quite like that green tarnish on them. It shows their age. So I just wiped them down with some soapy water to clean them up a bit and dried them off before reinstalling them. These cocktail sticks were rusty too, so I used some 400 grit paper to clean them up. I also wanted to remove the rust from the holder, but when I tried to remove these screws, they were not budging. So I masked around them and sanded them in situ, which helped to remove most of the rust, but there was a spot below the screw on the right that you can see there that just wouldn't sand out, unfortunately. I then added some three in one oil to any of the moving components. and also to these ball catchers as they were seized up with rust too. To get the drawer running smoother, I just added some candle wax to the bottom rails and sides of the drawer, and then it glided in there really nice and smoothly. 
My partner Rhea then gave the unit a thorough cleaning inside and out and here are some before and after pictures of the finished piece. I did intend on filming how the top section looked with the light on and everything as it looked really cool but unfortunately I couldn't find the footage of that when it came to editing the video. I'm not sure whether I forgot to film it or just lost the footage so that's a shame. Apologies I can't show you that but it looked really nice. And I delivered it back to the client who was really pleased with it so that's good. In total this project took just over a day's work, probably about 8 or 9 hours in total. I'm happy with how it turned out. I might be working on another cocktail unit soon too that has some flaking veneer so it needs some new veneer patches added to it. Let me know in the comments section if that's something you're interested in seeing and if it is I'll make sure to film that one too. I hope you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel you can do that via PayPal or Patreon. Links to both of those are in the description box below and on Patreon you can also get early access to my videos, some exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.